uh, Shan, the country manager of Zynga India, to give his introduction. And following that would be the keynote by Mark Skaggs, uh, Senior Vice President of Zynga and the creator of Farmville and Cityville, Sean. Thank you, Rajesh, for those kind words. It's cool to be a game developer. How many of you guys think that again? <laughs> Let's hear it out. Let's say cool. Cool. Rajiv here is contemplating creating a new NASCOM game about uh, you know the 2G spectrum and how to do that efficiently. <laughs> we just discussed that idea yesterday. So uh, I'm really excited to be here. I'm really, really excited to be here. Uh, the, one of my great passion, and I'm sure is the passion for all of you guys here, is to see how we can level up, or how we can, to use a gaming term, how we can level up the gaming ecosystem in India, right? How can we get all facets of uh, gaming, be it uh, art, the content, animation, in, and sort of building really successful games for both the Indian market as well as the global market? And how do we accelerate that process? The reason why I'm excited is that exactly the same lines of reasons that uh, Rajesh said, we are at an inflection point where I can strongly see this happening. And let me tell you some of the symptoms that I'm seeing. So at the first end is really the support system. You know, this room full of audience and you guys and seeing your passion is really a testimony to that, right? This, the whole energy and even sort of the extra music that I saw, which you know, has not happened in the past and the color, that's really an indication of how well this event has been organized and sort of the meaty content that has come into place. Uh, so uh, Zynga started our operations about a year back and really the question was, can you guys actually pull things off from India in a very short duration? And it's been really proud for me to say that in, in less than a year, we've been able to put together a really successful team and to start shipping successful games and game features out of India. But that's not to our credit, right? There's a fair bit of that. But what is really happening is we are standing on the shoulders of the giants, right, of the gaming industry in India. The Rajeshas, uh, you know, the Vishals, and the, all of you guys here, the gaming community in India. You are what has made this, eco uh, this ecosystem successful. And uh, to that effect, I really like to thank NASCOM, uh, the organizing committee, and all of you, the speakers, for really making this a lively and what I think would be a really splendid event. So that was the first point, the ecosystem. The second aspect to it, uh, and as you've seen in some of those pictures of the, of the kids from Dharavi, is that the market segment that we are catering to has suddenly reached a pretty big explosive growth, right? We are no longer catering to the... Uh, we are catering to the hardcore gaming audience and the slice of the audience that are the young adults and the traditional gaming audience, but now it's also expanding, and it's expanding to a much larger footprint of new kinds of players, right? The, the moms, the, the, the small kids that we talked about, the people who didn't really have access to computers in the past, the 35-year-olds, and we uh, have even sort of 60s and 80-year-olds playing some of these games, right? And it is attributed to a number of phenomena, social games, mobile apps, new distribution channels and the like. In particular, and in the ensuing uh, presentation by Mark, I wanted to give you a little bit of color about social games in general. Uh, because that's really something that you will hear a lot in this, uh, in this presentation. And as game developers, I think it's important for all of you to take advantage of that new market segment. And more importantly, a market segment that comes in with a very low cost of entry, both for the consumer as well as game developers. So what is a social game? A social game is a game that you can play with your friends. So it's for a casual audience. Uh, the reason why a social game is so successful, and speaking from experience from Zynga, uh, just to give you a little bit of high, high color, our vision is that we can connect the world through games, right? And what that means is we connect uh, the kids from uh, Dharavi, we connect uh, the, you know, the working professionals, we connect uh, pretty much uh, everybody, the traditional hardcore gaming audience, the much broader footprint. And the bottom line summary of the whole process is that the games have now become much more mainstream, right? Day-to-day, -day, everyday people who has not played it. And going back to Rajesh's remark on why it's so cool to be a game developer these days, uh, especially in the last couple of years, whenever I go down to my hometown or other places, 
I get these uh, really, hey, you're a cool dude kind of look from all the kids, the cousins, all of those people who have you know, give, gifted the strawberries, the oranges in Farmville or the tractors. So that sort of being much more mainstream and not being restricted to a smaller audience is a big success. And that, I think, is the second key part of why I'm so excited today. The third point, and coming to the third point, is really that with all these changes, there is also sort of huge amounts of pressure on us as game developers, right? Because to be cool, you need to do a few other things, right? So, uh, for example, game development life cycles have now been compressed. You need to ship a game in three months' time or a much shorter duration with lower number of people. So what this means is that there's a fair amount of changes and old rules don't work anymore. So, for example, in game design, uh, the traditional console le game lengths don't apply anymore. You need, you're, you're now catering to a mom uh, who's got only probably five minutes of stress busting time, right? So you need to, pre you know, Mark can explain this in much more articulate terms than I can. You need to now design games that are now catered to a different set of audience with different set of rules. And that applies across in terms of technology. What that means is now you need to look at technology that can ship a game in three months' time, right? You need to look at HTML5 or Flash or things like that. So what this means is that this sort of a pace of innovation cannot be done by us as studios in silos. I mean, it is not something that a single studio alone or a single game developer alone can do. This really needs this ecosystem to collaborate, to share information, and to share uh, everything that we have learned. And that, and that is the most important thing that is really making me excited in today's conference is the amount of that sharing and information sharing. If you just look at sort of the the, the content for today's agenda, it's a pretty meaty agenda. It's really, really meaty. And more importantly, we've got mentors and we've got people like Mark Skaggs. Mark is one of, one of my best mentors, and I'm sure he'll be a big mentor to the Indian gaming ecosystem. So Mark is a veteran. Mark no needs no introduction, but I'll just give it anyway. Mark is a veteran from the gaming industry. Talk about any form of gaming, social, PC, casual, and I don't know, whatever else, Mark. I was not around at that time. Uh, you, know, you can attribute that to Mark. Uh, the household names like Farmville, Cityville, uh, or any of the top 10 Facebook apps, uh, you can see Mark's fingerprints all over it. Uh, Command and Conquer, you know, Red Alert 2, uh, Lord of the Ring, Battle for the Middle Earth, the list goes on. So without much further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Let's give a big round of applause for the game magician, the man who's transformed gaming, Mark Gerald Skaggs. So, uh, all right. So, guys, we are, in India, we have a tradition of uh, welcoming and honoring our seniors and no different today. We have, uh, you know, Mark who's come to India. We have a, we consider you a senior who can help this industry, and you've already shown how this industry can become so much more bigger. So uh, we have a, a traditional Indian way of welcoming our guests. Okay. Is a, a coconut? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a, a sandalwood garland. Yeah. This is a, a, a Maharashtrian peta. And a shawl. <laughs> and a small gift. This is a, the gift is a, a small statue of a Ganesha. Um, he's, in India, the, the god Ganesha is considered as a god who removes obstacles from your way. Oh. So when we start any new enterprise, even kids going to an exam, anybody starting anything new, they pray to this guy. And he's supposed to be a cool god. We have every year his birthday is celebrated with different statues of, of Ganesha in okay. topical, you know, uh, okay. statues and so on. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Take this. So I'm going to exit. Okay. Yeah. I think we'll exit. This here. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Do you So is this on? You guys can hear me? All right. 
So it's just going to take a second while we switch out my laptop. Uh, and while we're doing that, I just want to say that I'm very honored and excited to be here at this inflection point. And I know um, we've heard the speakers already talk about that. I witnessed it firsthand yesterday when I, um, when I uh, visited the Zynga India office, the, the talented people there and the sense of energy and activity of what's going on and the work that they're doing, the features that they're generating, the games they're working on. It's just very exciting for me to see because it reminds me a lot of when I first started in the industry a long time ago, small teams, big hopes and dreams and expectations, and a lot of talent too. So I'm very excited and happy to be here. So if, before I kind of start presenting, let's see what's up there. Um, I just want to ask a quick question. Who here is actually doing, making games right now? Okay. Who here wants to make games? All right. A few more. All right. Uh, the folks that are making games, is it anybody doing console development? Okay. <laughs> a few. Uh, PC? A few more. Uh, social games or web games? Okay. Great. I uh, just wanted to see who you guys were and what you're about. Let me go ahead and fire this up right now. I tend to move around a lot. Oops. Don't look at my password. Tend to move around a lot, so if I get to a point where you guys can't see me, <laughs> whoops. There we go. If you get to a point where you guys can't see me, uh, just let me know and I'll come back up here. So, I'm also used to being able to see. So, it's about, uh, we're going to talk about uh, creating successful social games, and of course, uh, Zynga's mission is connecting the world through games. I think one of the things we found with Farmville or Cityville is the exciting side effect of a mother playing Farmville and suddenly their kid comes up and saying, Mom, what are you doing? And sits on their lap and they start playing the game together. The next day the kid comes to Mom and says, I want to play the farm, farm game. And that starts working. And then the mother, of course, because she needs a gift or something, she calls her sister and says, hey, can you start playing uh, Farmville as well? And then it goes on and on, the sisters, the daughters, the grandmothers. Next thing you know, uh, the husband gets a tap. Hey, can you, can you watch my crops because I have to go somewhere or do something? So I love that sort of interconnected process that's happened, and that's what Zynga's mission is. Right? So you might know us from all the games that we make. Um, we've got 230 million active users every single month. That's a, that's a large, large number. It's sort of stunning to me. The other, other big pieces before I move on is that we have two billion minutes of gameplay each day for Zynga games. Two billion minutes. And to kind of put that in perspective, that's about 3,800 years of time every day is spent on Zynga games. It's, it's pretty incredible. I, it's, it's very, very stunning to me. So I'm excited about that. We're on all the different platforms. Um, basically, I like to say where there's players, we're going to go there and make games for them to help connect them and their friends. OK, so let's talk about the talk. You guys might have heard this statement, right? Give a, a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him to fish, feed him for a lifetime. What I want to do today is to share every bit of information that I can in the short time that we have together. I'm going to sh share the information that I give to my teams, the teams that I work with on farm and city and treasure and this new game that I'm working on. It's exactly the same thing. Hopefully through this process I can share and shorten your guys' path uh, to making great games and having fun doing it. So, but one key note for you guys to understand, it's more than about, more than just about the lessons learned. You know, we could talk about how with Farmville, we had a small team size at launch, but that didn't really apply to Cityville, right? We can talk about how locking down the art style for City before we went outsourcing with it, but that doesn't really tell you why we made Cityville look the way it is. And the goal is for me to give you the context and the situation and, and whatever wisdom I can that I've learned through failure and, and hard times so that you can accelerate your way through your path, but also you have an answer that may have a thought process that maybe could work for you. All right. A bit about my history. Worked on traditional games. I started making games in 1993. Uh, the first game that I made is on the lower left hand side of there, the screen there, Gritters. It was terrible. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible game. Uh, but I learned a lot. All right. And what I tell people now is go ahead and quick make your first game because it's probably not going to be great. Get your bad one over with so you can start getting to the good ones. 